Peace and blessings. This is me, Sile Bay, aka Warlock Asylum, coming at you once again with another episode of Raw Talk. And today I want to give my review of the 2020 presidential debate, Joe Biden versus Donald Trump. And, you know, I thought it was a much better debate than the first debate. Um, however, what came to me during this debate is how much in trouble America is. And it's not even seeing what is coming. You know what I mean? And it's not even a fear message because I want to get into some solutions because that would be wrong to put a person in a state of fear and not give them, you know, a way or means to escape to salvation, to get to a place of prosperity. Um, I thought, you know, for me, the debate, was sort of even killed, but probably slightly a little bit more in Trump's favor. I felt that, although I believe that, I, I don't think that Trump answered everything to the best of his ability. I think some things he kind of went around a side step and focused more on himself. Like when the, the uh, moderator, which was probably one of the better moderators, um, very beautiful moderator, but probably one of the better moderators where you know, she asked about um, on the topic of race relations, speaking to families of, um, you know, African-American families, Latino families about certain issues. And he kind of got into what he did, you know, in office already, which, which is understandable, but I think he should have been directly more about like, you know, I would say this, this, and this to these families. Like he's kind of emphasized what he's done. So, it was kind of known with Biden. I think Biden, I'll be honest with you, I think Biden's perspective was a little bit more um, fantasaical. I don't think it was practical. And I think that's from my personal opinion. I think that Trump won on that aspect, but I think because of the way the questions were answered, I don't think that's clearly seen. People are hopeful to get to a better place. Let's just, you know, and when those things happen, it's like a woman who's in a relationship, you know what I'm saying? A woman who's in a relationship, if she's dealing with someone who's, you know, not good for her, she'll run into the arms of someone else almost immediately. And that may not be good for her. And this is what we're facing. So you have to really think about what you're doing because America is at the brink of it's almost at the brink of where it could be infiltrated by where it's infiltrated by another nation already, but it's almost it's at the brink of where it could if something was to you know break out, you know, like a war or something, you know, this is a very vulnerable time. And that's what this is what's a scary time about now. Because when you look at the leadership, could it handle that? That's what you want to look at. First, I'm gonna keep it a buck with everyone listening to this. All that stuff, the only issues that were real in this debate were the issues of race. They didn't go into police brutality. Race <laughs> and um, COVID, you know. The other thing that could be influenced is the economy. Out of those three issues, the only issues that could be influenced is the economy. COVID cannot be influenced by the leadership in Washington because they don't know everything about the disease. They don't know like who's gonna produce a vaccine. You know, all they can do, so when Joe Biden got into that situation, when he answered the question about COVID, I didn't take the answer really as credible. You know, he just said, you know, I'll make everyone wear a mask and, you know, you know, all these other things. And some people are going to protest and say that we have a constitutional right not to wear our mask, which is what happened. So basically, he's just reemphasizing everything that's going on now. Trump was saying stuff that was promising, but, you know, we can't speak on things that are not into existence. So on that, I felt that was a total waste of time as far as the debate is concerned. Like, it's a good question to ask because you get an idea of how people may weather the storm. But in reality, you know, 
I, I just didn't see, you know, like how that's a hot issue. It, people should hear about what's going to happen. But basically, what really can be said, you know, we don't have a vaccine. We don't know how people are going to receive a vaccine, how people are going to, if they're going to not want to receive a vaccine. You know, what's really, this is going to be a whole other mess. If a vaccine comes out, that's a whole other issue. You see what I'm saying? And a lot of this is because of the disenfranchisement that has been occurring for a couple of years. So for that reason, you know, what I would say is that Biden is a politician and Trump is a businessman. And the two aspects, you know, have their pros and cons. You know, on some levels, Trump does guarantee what he can deliver in the sense that, like, I can deliver on the economy. This is what this is. Biden is going to say things as a politician that's going to win him favors. And some things he says, it kind of really tells you what he's really going to do. You know what I'm saying? Um, and what he's really not going to do. You know what I'm saying? So I thought that, you know, it was kind of even killed, but Trump mostly, he just said what was real. Like, look, man, one thing I would say was Biden was more prepared. He wasn't taking like these jokes from Trump, like these side shots and taking them and just getting into speech and aggressive tones that don't lead up to nothing. Because in the first debate, it was just really like a little bit of a shit show, to be honest with you. Um, and in this debate, it was a little bit more poised. But here's the thing about all of this. Trump was correct. Your son, he had a problem with crack. You know, he's, he's a crack smoker. When I read about Hunter Biden, I don't even know how Bernie Sanders backed this dude up. I thought like, you know, Bernie is more like a, he's like a, a DH hitter in baseball. He's like a dude that comes in, he has a reputation and, you know, they may bring him in, hopefully he'll hit a home run, hopefully not. But to the Democrats, a home run is confiscating all his voters. It's a, it's a, a strategic game plan. Bernie Sanders is going to win. It's, it happens every year. It may happen next year. The next time he, you know, next presidential election, he still may run. Why? Because Bernie's going to say some things that people are going to get behind. He's going to say some real stuff, um, borderline socialist stuff, as people call it. And the Democrats are going to look at him and they're going to say, okay, very good job, Bernie. And he's going to turn all his votership over to them. It's a game, you know, that they play. Right. But the thing what, you know, I really don't understand is like when I read about Hunter Biden. OK, Hunter Biden, when they did the whole Ukraine investigation. Right. First of all, it was true. Hunter Biden was making about eighty thousand dollars a year. This is a person who had no experience. I forget the name of the company, um, but I, I read about it. I researched this because I heard about it. I researched it. So when they was a doing, you know, whatever investigations with Trump, they found out some things about Hunter Biden. For example, he had a child with a, a woman that was probably young in age. I'll just say it like that. And he had got this girl pregnant while he was dating his brother's widow. And I was like, yo, man, this is wild. Like your brother died and you date the dude's wife, your own brother? I, I don't know. <laughs> Like, I think maybe like a hundred thousand, a thousand years ago, you know, certain things were custom, but I just couldn't see Joe Biden, you being a father and you letting your son date his brother's widow. <laughs> Yo, it's crazy. Then on top of this, the dude's making $80,000 a month. He gets this job making $80,000 a month. Now, the company has a whole bunch of violations. So the government's prosecutor, you know, is this dude prosecuting this company, right? So all of a sudden, Joe Biden goes over to the Ukraine. And nine days later, the prosecutor that was going after the company that Joe Biden's son was working for was fired nine days after 
Joe Biden enters the country. That's facts. You know what I'm saying? That's nothing like scrupulous. I don't know all about the stuff that Trump was talking about with the money, but I know that was a fact. You see what I'm saying? And people say because of that, the Ukraine, he was able to secure a deal and get so much money out of the Ukraine that the U.S. was looking for. You know what I'm saying? But the thing is, this dude is coming in with political complications. There was another situation where he went to Obama. Joe Biden wasn't really visible during Obama's election. Obama knew this dude had a swift mouth and he gave him a spatula and all you saw Biden doing during Obama's eight years as president was cutting cake at press conferences. He was always in the back with his shirt on, looking like a former Coke sniffer, you know, with a jacket on or whatever. And, you know, he was just like in the back looking like somebody from Vegas cutting cake at the press conferences, you know, talking to children, rubbing rubbing children's backs or whatever. He wasn't really visible like that. You know what I'm saying? Because Obama knew. And then he tried to get Obama to loosen regulations with China so that his son's company could benefit. So Obama really pushed him to the back then. So those things are not fictional. And voters have to think, like, are we going to throw somebody in office who's being compromised by nations? That's a serious threat. Like, here's the scenario that you have to look at. Let's just say that there was some tamperings with the elections. And, you know, um, Trump got in office. And then after that, you know, you got this pandemic coming out, you know what I'm saying? Now, because of this, we're going to get these people to vote for this person, right? Who we already have in our pocket because of his son. You see what I'm saying? If you, the reason why family comes up during debates is because if your family's not tight, you know what I'm saying? Then, you know, you running for office, you may do things that can counter um, their, you know, it can counter the nation's security, but it can also, you can try to pull laws, to, you know, to manipulate certain outcomes for your children. You know, for example, you know, he was talking about, Biden was talking about, you know, drug offenders, you shouldn't have to go to prison for marijuana and stuff. But he's saying that now because his son has a, a has drug history. You see what I'm saying? Trump's children don't have drug history, so he can make you know, whatever laws, because his children don't have drug history. You know what I mean? Um, but Biden may make them laws because, you know, what he was dealing with was his son. Now, it could be a lesson learned where he could be more compassionate, or he could be trying to break his son even to re rewrite history. You know what I'm saying? So that has to be looked at. You know what I'm saying? All reality. People, when they're not having a good time, you know, in a relationship, they want to run into the arms of someone else, but you have to be careful because that could be a dangerous situation. You know what I'm saying? Um, when I saw the debate, I saw, you know, Trump. I mean, I, we know who he is by now, you know? So I think for me, he could have answered some of the questions referring to Trump on race relations better. I think Biden answered the questions a little bit more clearly as far as like being a more poised and discreet speaker. However, if you're African-American or Latino, don't expect, I wouldn't really expect too much. What Trump gives out as far as money and all those other things, you know, partnering Jack Johnson and doing stuff other presidents didn't do, that is true. But as far as like getting to a space like, it's really all about self-responsibility, number one. But number two, as far as getting to a space where what government is working for you, don't, don't, don't dread on that, you know what I'm saying? Don't give that too much of thought. I'm going to tell you why. Here's something that most, a lot of African Americans don't know, a lot of Latino people don't know, a lot of white liberals don't know, a lot of people don't know. I'm gonna break it down. Now, it goes back, I'm gonna share my screen on this, to this comment that Joe Biden made, out of the many comments he made that were derogatory. 
Um, but he said, if you you know, if you don't vote for me, you're not black. Something to that effect in, in an interview with Charlemagne the God from the Breakfast Club. But here's, but what is not focused on is what he said after that. That's a more weightier subject than the insult he said itself. So I want to share my screen. I want us to take a look at this comment and I'm going to expand on it a little bit and how it works in terms of the election. Okay, let me see. Let me well, let me stop sharing. Hold on. That's not the screen I want to share. It's this screen. Okay, so this thing, it wants to play games today. Hold on, let me pause. It. Okay, I'm back. So let's, um, I'm going to share the screen. I figured out what the problem was. I want you to take a look at this video. This is the last few seconds of his interview, Joe Biden's interview with Charlemagne the God. And what he says is very, very impactful to the state of African Americans in America. And it may even touch on some aspects with Latino people as well. It's a huge statement. What he said after, if you're not black statement is what I'm referring to. That's more impactful than actual, actually the insult itself. So I want to share my screen and I want us, for us to view this together and I'm going to talk about it. Okay, here we are. I'm going to share this part and tell me what you think. Now watch what he says. Okay, so let me stop sharing the screen. <laughs> I'm gonna get into this. So now you notice what he says. He said that he extended the Voting Rights Act for 25 years. Now, a lot of people don't know that the Voting Rights Act is not a law. It has to get ratified by Congress every so often because it's an act, it's not a law. My thing is this, if you're a politician and you've been in politics for 47 years, why is it that the African-American vote has to be ratified by Congress every 25 years? Why? So someone can come from Czechoslovakia, become a citizen, go through the process of naturalization, because this is the thing, African-Americans never went through the process of naturalization. In order to be a citizen, you have to be born and naturalized. They never went through the process of naturalization. So a lot of their rights has to come through acts and laws. A lot of people don't understand this from the legal end. So here you have someone coming in from Czechoslovakia. Yo, and this dude could become a citizen. His right to vote is never questioned. But this dude's parents, they were slaves here. They, they, they went through civil rights. They, they, you know, he got a good job. He's a, he's, he's a big dude in the computer world now. And... His family's been here for three or 400 years, and his right to vote, based on his heritage, has to be ratified. That's more insulting. And, and it's for Joe Biden to say that if you're not, if you don't vote for me, you're not black, and then raise up the fact about the Voting Rights Act, because, you know, a lot of people, when Trump said, let's make America great again, it's like, oh, he's saying, let's make America white again. Okay. But when you look at what Biden was saying, because a lot of people said that when the Voting Rights Act was signed off by Lyndon B. Johnson, Lyndon B. Johnson said, I'm going to have, you know, the N-word voting Democrat for the next 40 years. So for him to say, if you don't, if you're not Black, if you don't vote for me, that's a re reference to Lyndon B. Johnson. If we're going to use the same standards to what you know, saying Trump say, let's make America great again, meaning let's make America white again. What was Joe, what was Joe Biden saying? Which, <clears throat> let me just clear this up. Make America great again is, is a term that Ronald Reagan came up with, right? Okay, so he, he was working from that term. But if you're coming in on some, you know, saying some stuff like, you know, if you're not, 
you know, if you don't vote for me, you're not black. And then, you know, that's kind of riding off of what Lyndon B. Johnson said that he'll have niggas voting Democrat for the next 40 years, right? Then on top of that, you talk about the Voting Rights Act. And here's what I don't understand. If you're a politician, why haven't politicians, if they're working for the people, which is Kamala Harris, why haven't any of these politicians spoke about making the right to vote, moving it beyond the act, making it a law? You see what I'm saying? So that's why I say, like, if you African-American, Latino, yeah, you could throw that shit in the bucket, B. This, this is not going to work, you know what I'm saying? Because your right to vote is still not there, like, in, in the way it should be. You know what I'm saying? You can go to the polls, you can vote and all this kind of, but it's sort of insulting if you have to get your right to vote ratified after your history here. It's disgusting. And none of these presidents could make that happen, but they can come and petition you. They can get Cardi B to bring, you know, the WAP song about the vaginal juices. They can interview them. They can go to the black churches, eat the peach cobbler, sing the songs on Martin Luther King's Day do all of this come into your face and say, hey, man, you know, like he said, he got the NAACP backing him up, and none of them could make the Voting Rights Act into a law so that it doesn't have to be ratified every 25 years? Are you nuts? You know what I'm saying? We shouldn't even be dealing with this stuff. You know what I'm saying? Puffy had a good idea, P. Diddy, about developing a party, but if you're going to develop a party, Puffy, develop a party, man. Don't develop something that comes from Democrats. You know what I'm saying? I, I personally, I'm not too much in the Democratic pocket too much because Democrats, all the slave owners was Democrats. Malcolm X spoke heavily against Democrats. You know what I'm saying? Um, and when you look at the population, African-Americans, their progress slowed down when they began to follow Democrats. What Democrats did, it was very ingenious what they did. What they did is they took the population of the incoming population, the Latino population, they took the LGB community, which was called gay rights at the time. They took women's rights and they put all of that into a potluck soup. And the reason why they did that is because most of the issues that could surface from that potluck, they can answer except one. And that was the African Americans issue with reparations and just certain rights, you know, like voting, but just like we're discussing voting rights. So what it allows is allows those issues to be drowned out. As people of color, we feel kinship. You know what I'm saying? We feel kinship. It's been historical. I don't even want to talk about it, but there's a kinship. So we see someone coming up, you know, because Oppression is all around the world. You see someone coming from a different country, like, yo, man, that person, they made it into the United States. That's good, man, because where they came from, it was rough. You know, he's a brother just like us. You know what I'm saying? He may speak a different language. You know, he may speak Spanish, whatever. But, you know, we're all the same people. We always hear this amongst each other, you know what I'm saying, for people who don't know. But so there's a little bit like, you know, we're not going to get in your face like that or whatever. And... In some cases, it has gotten like that because the Democrats were trying to pit one against the other. But when you really analyze the strategy, a lot of that's done to drown out a bigger problem, which is the African-American problem with the government. While other people may come from other nations, their problem was more or less with the government that they came from. The African-American problem is, is not handled you know what I'm saying? And it still hasn't been handled. That's why there's police brutality. That's why there's all these different things going on because, you know, it hasn't been handled. So here's the question. This dude can make a 1994 crime bill, but he can't push for the right to vote to move beyond the act that has to be ratified every 25 years into a law. He's been in politics for 47 years. Now he claims to be the messiah of the black community and he cannot push the idea of the Voting Rights Act into law. No one's ever thought about this. None of these groups ever thought about this. See, this is where the problem, this is where the BS comes in at. You know what I'm saying? Because you can't really be for somebody and then, you know, it's, it's fake. You know what I'm saying? 
Obama. His father's from Kenya. His mother is, is, is an Anglo-Saxon woman. You know, I don't know the exact. I believe she's Anglo-Saxon. Right? Okay. He's not a black dude. He's not a black dude. You know what I'm saying? Let's, that's, he's not black. You know what I'm saying? Kamala Harris, she's not black. You know what I'm saying? She could be an African-American woman, but she's not a black. She's not someone... Here's the thing about this. I don't have a, a credit card to say who's this and who's that. Let me just keep it real. But the thing about it is this. Why are all these political people that are so close to the White House? It's almost like an insult. Like you picking people who's people who've only been in the country like two generations. So that just says like, oh, you know, these people, they're so stupid that the only ones that really have some form of intelligence are the ones who are not the descendants of slaves because they, they can do this. They can get to the White House. They can do this. No, show us a person who went through the slavery process as people and they were able to rise up. It's a, it's a scam. You know what I'm saying? Meanwhile, I'm like, oh man, we got, you know, black, no, his father's from Kenya and his mother is white. You know what I'm saying? That's a different experience. Actually, when he got to Columbia University, Harlem was a shock for him. You know what I'm saying? Michelle probably balanced him out a lot, but Harlem was a shock for Obama. You know what I'm saying? Because he never really been around that environment. He was raised, same thing with this woman. She was raised amongst white people, white, rich people aristocracy. She wasn't raised in the hood. When they asked Kamala Harris, who's your favorite rapper alive today? She said Tupac Shakur. Like, that's an insult. You know what I'm saying? That's an insult. You know, Hillary comes, you know, Hillary Clinton comes on, on, on the radio show and she's talking about she got hot sauce in the bag, something like with Beyonce. But why are you quoting people who are entertainers? Because we're represented by court justice. That's what they deal with. They don't deal with the people um, who are really talking about real politics. The news may have them on for like a five second clip, but you have a lot of people in the, in the black and brown community who are really doing a lot in the community as assembly women, assembly men, you know, all this kind of stuff. And every time the Democrats got to pick some, some crazy shit out the hoop, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, yeah, his father was Alaskan and the mother was from Ghana. And now, you know, it's not disrespect to anybody from them places, but yo, there's people who are working hard within here that you can pick. You know what I'm saying? And that gets overlooked. So the 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 people who are descendants of slaves are being overlooked by the Democratic Party, which is the same party who was all slave owners. You know what I'm saying? Then this dude comes up and he's talking about he's going to do this and that and he hasn't done anything in 47 years. You know what I'm saying? Obama didn't even let the dude speak publicly. You know what I'm saying? So when I looked at the debate, you know, I'm not saying that any of these dudes are saints. It's truly a voting of the lesser two evils. You know, I'm not, I'm not stupid. But the thing is, like a businessman coming into politics is different from someone who's a lifetime politician. A lifetime politician is built on commitment and service. He's not built, you know, a businessman coming in, he's, he's a dude who's making profit. You know what I'm saying? And, I, you know, there were some things I thought Trump should have left out, you know what I'm saying, in my review of all of this. He should have left out, you know, like, you know, I'm the least racist person. That to me was corny. It didn't sound right. You know what I'm saying? I'm just going to keep it a buck with y'all. I, I wasn't feeling that. Now, I do know some things about Trump. Trump was a guy, when he won the last election, the first person that he called, it was in the magazine, and you didn't hear no more about it. The first person that he called when he won the election was Al Sharpton, because him and Al used to be, they used to be cool because they was in the boxing world together. He, I think Don King introduced Trump. And see, the thing about it was a lot of the dudes that Trump hung out in the, in the black community were gangsters. They were black gangsters. You know, they were dudes who were putting, you know, into boxing and stuff like that. So he knew that world and he would toy around with it. So when he, he got on as president, he kind of left that behind because he didn't want to be scrutinized through that. But 
you know, he's trying to project this other different sort of image or whatever. But really, he was around them dudes. He was around Jesse Jackson. He was around, actually, when you read his book, he wrote a lot of bright things about Obama before they start going tit for tat. He wrote a lot of, you know, he's like, yo, Obama's a really smart dude. That's what he wrote in his book, you know what I'm saying? But instead of like, see, the thing with Trump that I don't like is that instead of him going into that, he should have went into that. Like, yo, you know, you know, Sharpton, he used to hang out, you know, da da Jesse Jackson. He got, I think he got Jesse Jackson out of trouble with something. He did help. I think it was, Je no, he helped out. I think it was Jesse or Sharpton. I think he helped out Sharpton, right? I got to look into it. But it was one of those, it was between the two, between Jesse and Sharpton. He did a favor that kept them out of jail. You know what I'm saying? That he really didn't have to do. I think it was Jesse Jackson. But he, I know with Jesse Jackson, he had loaned him some money, you know, because at one time Trump was like a big dude as far as like, you know, anything dealing with wealth, it was always identified with Trump, you know what I'm saying? So he worked a lot with the black community from the generation of the 80s and the early 90s. And then later on, you know, the rappers used to talk about him in his songs and stuff like that. So, you know, like Floyd Mayweather said, like, you know, as soon as this dude got on, you know, people start calling him a racist. I think that was, I think he just pissed somebody off. You know what I'm saying? If you if you piss somebody off and they got the camera in front of your face all the time and, you know, they misconstrue what you say and take quotes and stuff like that, they can do that. I do believe that happened. You know what I'm saying? I'm just being fair and as honest as possible. I think that, you know, he pissed somebody off and it's like, yo, we're going to send this dude down the wrecking ship. But he might have taken certain things for granted because, even though, like, my generation knew more about Trump, um, you got to be careful because he may have felt comfortable because he'd been around, you know, Black people or whatever, and, and he may have felt comfortable saying certain things, you know what I'm saying? Even Russell Simmons called Trump to do an intro on Method Man's album, you know what I'm saying? So Trump <laughs> is the only president who's been on a Wu-Tang production, right? You know, he should have came out with that. You know what I mean? Like if, if you know, Obama came out and had the roots playing for, for him, he should have came out and, and said like, yo, you know, I was on a Wu-Tang production. He should have said all of that. But instead of that, he tried to affiliate himself too much with this, this other stuff. And and ultimately, that's what hurt his constituency because he could have even had a strong constituency. He could have came out and said, like, look, you know what I mean? I don't have nothing against Mexican people. You know what I'm saying? I just don't want, you know, we getting infiltrated. You got the gangs coming over here. And I want to curb that because people should feel secure. You, you know, there's a way you say things, man. You can say things. And even if you said things, you can come out and say, like, yo, you know what? this is what this is about. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to put anyone on blast, but yo, this is what, this is what's real. If he could have came like that, he would have had a huge ton of support. But when you come out and say certain things and then you got, you know, you, you know, you, you don't really, you know, joggle with what you're saying. It's kind of weird. You know what I'm saying? Then, you, you know, your cabinet, it's not too colorful. You know what I'm saying? The Republican Party, they were organized partially to stop slavery. A lot of people don't know that. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so the first Republican president was Abraham Lincoln, who freed the states because that was part of their agenda. Lincoln also had his issues with people. You know, people who are enslaved, they don't have a lot of etiquette. It's to be real. You know what I'm saying? But that doesn't mean, you know, they're in the press state. So what do you want to expect? You know what I'm saying? Um, so Lincoln would say his BS, you know, about black people, even though he wrote the Emancipation Proclamation. So just, you know, doing that, that doesn't mean a person's not prejudiced or whatever, you know what I'm saying, in the true sense of the term. You should really be high up about equality for all people, you know what I'm saying? But I just think that, you know, Trump, he could lay his intentions a lot more clearly um, throughout the time he had been president, you know what I'm saying? You start saying stuff like, you know, you come in with a certain type of energy. You always got to remember something. And this would kind of change me 
spiritually is that you got to remember that fear and negative emotions, they hurt your DNA. When you look up the DNA and how it receives emotions, fear is one of the emotions, even in Chinese medicine, it damages your kidneys. You know, it robs the kidneys of the of this, a life force. You know what I'm saying? So happiness, smiling, prosperity is actually good for a person. You know what I'm saying? So people who are listening to this, if you're an activist or you feel oppressed, you should definitely be spreading that in your community. I see a lot of dudes, they walk around, they want to be fear mongers. You know what I'm saying? Like just into fear, whatever. And, and that's not what this is about. You should... You know, for, in order for your community to thrive, you have to be dealing with emotions that are not associated with the underworld, is what I'm saying. So, like, for Trump, like, yo, you know, like, just, you know, be practical. A lot of times the camera's going to be on you, so you, you got to realize what you're saying, you know what I'm saying? That's all I got to say on that. But I'm going to give you an overview why I said America's in trouble. I hope, you know, this video's not too long for y'all, but I just wanted to give y'all a clear overview so you just ride with me a little bit longer you know, we could really make this pop. So basically my thing is like this, you know, America has been hijacked. The government has been hijacked. I had even been thinking about running for president. You know, I got to take care of some personal things and, you know, I'm going to go in, you know, for those who don't know, I'm an author, you know, I've written a couple of books or whatever, and you know, I deal a lot with spiritual studies or whatever. You know, I, I'm a Shinto priest, you know, I've worked a lot with the Mesopotamian pantheon. And that's, you know, I don't really get into what I'm doing, but if I'm going to talk about serving the people from D.C. or whatever, but here's the thing, like, when you look at Operation Paperclip, that was the real changing point in American history. Like, people talk about draining the swamp, that's where it started. That's what Trump, you have to go back to. You have to go back to that point. Like, you want to make America great again. You have to tell the American people that the country has been infiltrated and was infiltrated by the Nazi party. Prescott Bush, George Bush's grandfather, when, you know, this whole conflict was going on with World War II at the close of it, he was like, yeah, man, you know, we, we should get the Nazi scientists because their technology, we don't want them to go someplace else. You know what I'm saying? We don't want them, you know, to go someplace else and then, you know, someone else can use that technology and they'd be more advanced than us. So Harry Truman was like, yo, that's a good idea. But he said they need to be debriefed. Now, for those who don't know, the Nazi scientists at that time, this was long before Ancestry.com came out and all this crazy stuff. These dudes could trace their Aryan hood back 200 years. They would strive to do that. So these were not just people you know, who had an ideology, they was willing to die for their beliefs. The Nazi conviction, it wasn't like skinheads and Nazis in prison today. They were like on some stuff where, you know, like Christians being thrown into the lion's den. You know, it was pretty serious, you know what I'm saying? So they brought hundreds over these scientists over. And what they did is they created a space race. This is why I got nervous when Trump was talking about NASA and all the space stuff, because if you know anything about science. Science is a good form of study, but after World War II, it became gangsterized. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to tell you all the straight facts. It became gangsterized by the Nazi party. So when the Nazis came over there, they were like, yo, we need to make money. We're scientists anyway, so let's create a space race. Let's try to get to the moon. So some of the scientists went to Russia, some of them went to the United States, but they were still in contact with each other. And what they did is they created a competition to allow them to pull money. So when we look at all these theories, I'm gonna talk about them. And from that, they were able to create a mafia in the United States. And that's the mafia that's ruling the world. Since the time that the Operation Paperclip happened, it was the last time we saw a military president. The last president we had that was a military president was Eisenhower, that was it. When you look at Eisenhower before, most of the presidents were military men. They were service orientated. But since that time, we've had like treasurers come in. We had like lawyers come in as presidents. So 
to see that happen at that point is a definite conflict of interest. Next thing you know, drugs come into the community. A president gets assassinated. All this crazy stuff since Operation Paperclip. The government has been, it always been trashed. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, in order, we have to clean that out. You know, in order to really get to a certain place. But more recently, Iran, Russia, and China have been interfering with elections. Not just the Trump election. They've been, they were interfering with elections from 9-11. You know what I'm saying? They've been interfering with elections. And probably, you know, we went to war, you know, try to get terrorism out and stuff like that. It wasn't about them dudes. That was all about gaining control of oil. That was also an inside job, you know what I'm saying? Um, and it was done by certain groups. I don't even want to talk about too much on video, you know what I'm saying? But if you look at Iran, Russia, and China, you'll find out, you know what I'm saying? And they've been putting people in office since that time. And they'll create a balance. They'll put someone in there who's good, like Obama, and he'll do his dance, and then they'll make a counterfeit off, you know, offset. Because what they're doing is they're giving themselves time to strengthen their influence in the United States and to put people in position so that they can get a political advantage over on the world market so that the United States can lose control and not be at the best financial position that it has to be. Years ago, this would have led to war, you know what I'm saying? But now it's already in effect and for someone to, and this is why I say it's gloom, because for someone like Trump, you know what I'm saying, he came in, you know, he was doing a lot of stuff, you know what I'm saying, he pretty much, he did a lot of stuff he said he was going to do more than any other president, whether people liked it or not, he did, you know, he did some things or whatever that he said he was going to do, but the thing about it is that's scary, like, you know, the racism, there's not really an agenda to deal with that, so that's out the window, you know, it's, it's crazy. Everything is out the window, but the economy, but the economy now evolves around everything that is out the window. It's like COVID's out the window. We don't know how to solve that right now. Racism, they don't know how to solve that because they believe in race. If you don't believe in race, you can solve racism. You see what I'm saying? But they believe in race, so you can't solve it. So that's out the window, right? And the economy, it depends on all the things that are out the window. And that's the scary thing about it. So what's left? What's left is to put a president in that will give the forces enough time to come in, possibly get into a war. And by the time that the United States gets into the war, they have no allies. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, maybe... You know, I think about this. It's just honest talk. Maybe Trump, because he's a homegrown American, you know, maybe he thinks more about legacy. You know, even though he may not actually know how to authenticate it. Biden, and he's not a politician, so some things he's not used to. Most politicians have a group or committee to clean themselves up in front of the press. And then he says things that are way off. It could lead to a certain tension in the country. That's internal, okay? The internal chaos is going on, okay? Now the people, quote unquote, elect Biden. Okay, this is what's gonna happen, right? Kamala Harris is a little too wavy. You know what I'm saying? I don't think Biden will finish his first term. Kamala Harris may come in. If she comes into office, she's going to be challenged on a military level. It's just that simple. Here's the thing. With Biden, he has too much in his pocket with other people. You see what I'm saying? Um, Trump contributed to Kamala Harris's political career. You know what I'm saying? Which, when she ran, I thought that she was running to get a name for herself because since Trump contributed to her career, 
he gave donations to her, how can she run against them? Really, you know, you gave donations to a person, you want to look into who they are. They may have to listen to you because you gave them some money. It wasn't a lot of money from what I understand. I think it was like 10 or 15 grand. But but it wasn't like a big election. I think it was like, it was, it was like when she was local politician. So, you know, I'm looking at this. Okay, so this dude gets into office. You know, he'd been doing favors for people based on his son manipulating both him and Hillary. Hillary was doing the same thing. Hillary, Hillary Clinton, first of all, Bill Clinton was probably one, as a president, he was getting paid more than any other president to give speeches. His, his, his arena went from 500,000 a speech to 750,000 a speech only after his wife became Secretary of State. These people have been doing this for a long time. Trump is right about that. They do political favors for people. And what happened was there was some deal. I'm a little tired because it's late. But um, it allowed certain, like titanium or something, to come into the country because of this nonsense. And it went unchecked. You know what I'm saying? And so they been compromised. These politicians have been compromised. So if you elect Biden, you are going to see a war. It's just that simple because he's going to come off him and Kamala Harris. You know what I'm saying? You're going to come tell this dude he's a racist. He made a 1994 crime bill. Then he puts you on as vice president. And now you're sucking the dude off. <laughs> like, you know, this is crazy, B. Like, you got to have some morals. You know what I'm saying? You can't say that you want to defeat a person and like they about this, this, and this. And the next thing you know, I mean, I get Kamala Harris's position. You know, she hasn't been a political woman for a long time. She's, she's relatively young. She's very attractive physically. And yeah, I can imagine she was younger. And you know, like, yo, you know what I mean? Like you, you coming up here and this dude offers you a vice president's position. You're like, yeah, I'm gonna take it. You know what I'm saying? I could be the first you know, I can be, you know, the first, you know, woman president based on this dude's mortality rate, you know what I'm saying? So I get what she's saying, but it's just like, yo, you know, like, you see these people do a dance, you know, she came in as the first East Indian senator, now she's the first African-American VP, like, yo, this is nuts, yo. And people don't catch it. They just like, yo, you know, this ain't Trump. So we're going to ride with it. You know what I'm saying? It's the better of the two evils, less of the two evils. But is it really? When you think about it, like in conversation and poise, you know, Biden has a much more calmer tone. You know, Kamala has a calmer tone. You, you don't have to be on the edge of your feet every day. And even that's a farce because there was a reporter when Trump first won. He was like, yo, man, I'm, I'm, I'm going to check out the news. Because when Trump first won, it was like, yo, it was, I don't know if the world has seen something like that since, you know, in a while. But this one reporter, he was like, yo, man, I'm going to check out the news. I'm, I'm not going to get on the news, da, da, whatever. He, he was a journalist himself, so he did some research. So he found out that, like, this is the thing. The media... He found out, and these are roundabout numbers, you know. When Hillary Clinton, the media makes about five hundred thousand, five hundred million dollars a month with articles about Hillary Clinton when she was at her peak, right? When Obama was in, they made like seven hundred and fifty million a month. You know, speaking about Obama, and it would waver because when he first got in office, it was it was peaking at 750 mil, and then it would go back down. When Trump got in office, it was like $1.2 billion a month. The media was making, writing stories about Trump. So that's why they keep writing about him. Anything he says, yo, we got to write about this shit, dude, because it's going to make us a gold mine. And that's how they're looking at it. You see what I'm saying? But you got to be smart enough to see through all of that. You know what I'm saying? Because you have to look at you, you can look at the tonality, but like I said, it's like a woman who is in a certain type of relationship and she meets a nice guy, not really knowing his background, and she just jumps in a relationship with him. It's like a recipe for disaster. You know what I'm saying? I guarantee, like, yo, 
you know, Trump, I kind of, you know, he's going to talk about the economy, he did this, he did that, all this crazy stuff. But there's still like a deep dexterity that he won't get to that the media circus is playing. Like even after the debate tonight, I looked at CNN and all they was doing was fact checking what he was saying. They wasn't fact checking what Joe Biden was saying. That's why I'm saying what I'm saying because you know, you got to be even killed. And it's not because of who you want to see when, it's because of what you're stepping into. That's what you have to look at. People looking at, you know, the winner, the winner, the winner. But you got to look at what you're stepping into, what situations you're stepping into. And it doesn't mean that you shouldn't step into it. It just means you have to be aware of what you're stepping into. You see what I'm saying? When you vote, and you got to be for people who are allowed to vote. <laughs> when you vote, and you gotta you gotta be aware of what you stepping into. You know, not all this fantasaical stuff. You know, be aware of what you stepping into. If you just if if you know, here's uh, here's the thing about it that's so crazy. If Trump wins, you know what I'm saying, there's probably gonna be a little bit of a backlash. You know, some people are gonna be, even though the liberals are fighting for what's right, in some ways they're gonna be doing wrong. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, people should respect what happens, but it's gonna be all these conspiracy theories, all this crazy stuff. So that's whatever it is. So you just gotta stay out of the way of all of that. You know what I'm saying? Um, what I would say is that I don't know, I think as far as the coronavirus, we might see a couple of more spikes, but it's probably going to level and we're going to have to live like this for a little bit of time. Okay. Usually in, in pandemics, I'm going to be honest with you, the Spanish influenza was not cured by a vaccine. People just gained immunity and the others just died. That's how it's been for the past thousand years. I'm saying, ain't no vaccine cure, no pandemic. When something's a virus, there are certain things that can keep it under control. But a pandemic has never been cured through a vaccine. It's just that simple. Okay, you either and the leaders know this. That's why they're taking the action. If if it was anybody else, it would have been the same situation. But because these things have not happened in our lifetime. It is what it is. Read about the election of 1920, which is ironic. Um, and you can kind of see what they were dealing with, which is more horrific than what we're dealing with today because they were dealing with the conclusion of a world war. They were dealing with race riots. They were dealing with an election. It was similar things that were going on. Look that up. Um, but that's, but that's going to be the debate. And you're going to see like a you know, a somewhat economy that's kind of loose, but not decrepit. If Biden is elected, you may also see some kickback. You have to stay clear of all of that. You know what I'm saying? What you will see is you will see the economy sink and you will see America at war. You see what I'm saying? And you know, you may see some things progress. You may see, you know, uh, you may see some artsy things emerge, things emerging through art. But as far as like the economy is concerned and, you know, a couple of other things and war is concerned as far as national security, yeah, you could throw that in the bucket. Like, it's going to be, it's not going to be good. You know what I'm saying? And that's what you're dealing with. I don't want to sugarcoat, you know, stuff however you go. You know what I'm saying? You know, because that's your choice and that should be respected. No one should knock you down if you're voting for Trump. No one should knock you down if you're voting for Democrat. They may be staunchly different in degrees. But here's something to think about. When I was young, I never knew who Walter Cronkite was voting for. So I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to give you a suggestion. Turn off MSNBC, turn off CNN, turn off Fox News, turn them off, don't watch them. Watch BBC for three or four days only, as far as your news. Don't even look in the newspaper. Like if you want to check the weather on your phone, that's cool. But just check out BBC News 
And now, and, and then you can kind of see how much propaganda is coming through these media circuses. You see what I'm saying? You know, exercise your right to vote. You know what I'm saying? Um, but don't let someone tell you who to vote for. You see what I'm saying? That's wrong. You know, exercise your right to vote and feel proud because you're doing what your constitutional right is and your constitutional right is what you decide it to be. You know what I'm saying? No one should be telling you to vote because that's when stuff gets decrepit. Whether you hate Trump or you hate Biden, vote for who you're going to vote for. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, and that's it. And let let those things aside because that's how this country was structured. You know, if anything, that's how the country was structured. So don't let someone coerce you into something. Follow your intuition. You know what I'm saying? Follow your God-given ability of, of insight and stuff. You know, I just laid out some facts that, you know, wasn't really, you know, that, that's not really being discussed and things like that. And, you know, I just feel like, I don't know, the country's just gone into a, a place that just ain't good, y'all. You know what I'm saying? So that's all I got to say, man. You know what I mean? But, you know, in any case, we're still neighbors because we're still all Americans. So, you know, however it comes out, it comes out. Some people don't want to face reality and they may get a little bit tight or whatever, but you know what? You just got to, you got to hold on and, 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 and keep good because, you know, the thing about it is that the destiny of man is much greater than disease or financial disaster and stuff like that. And you as a soul, you don't want to lose your humanity because of some stupidness that probably linger around for like three or four years. You know what I'm saying? This is Misao Bay, a.k.a. Warlock Asylum. I'm going to say peace and blessings and have a good night.